Hello, everybody, and welcome to MLG TV. We've got what is the ace match in this series. This, of course, being from MLG Anaheim, we've got the Manor Zerg, Liquid Chef, facing off against the Emperor Slayer's Boxer. I'm Tumba, co-casting with me for this series, Dark and Light. That's right, and as we saw in last game, Sheth was able to tie up the series, so this will be the ace match, and the winner of this will get that crucial win in pool play. Now, I mean, I have to be say again, I'm so impressed with the Sheth in the last game. He got the scout off, yeah. and he made the perfect read. He knew that uh, Boxer would be staying on that very heavy Marine count, and mm -hmm. he was able to react perfectly with that Ling Bane Link timing attack, and I really enjoyed seeing that out of him. What do you think we're going to see this time around from Sheth? Uh, well, to be honest, I'd love to see, I love to watch Infestors. I mean, it's so good. I like to call them Winfesters because <laughs> as soon as we see them on the field, uh, it usually indicates the Zerg going for a win. So uh, I'd like to see a little, uh, maybe Infestor Broodlord, if he can go ahead. Uh, of course, metagaming a bit, got to hold the early aggression out of Boxer that I'm sure we're going to see and uh, and get to that mid game where he's solid enough on three base to, to go ahead and support uh, Broodlord and Infestor because it can be very, very hard to deal with. And to be honest, I would love to see how Boxer would handle that. Yeah, it would be interesting if the game does go that far, but look at this. Boxer once again gonna be dropping a proxy ratch. Not ratch. Rax. He's gonna be dropping a proxy racks there. But this is an interesting placement by him. Gonna be dropping it in the natural third place location. Yeah. And look at this. He will be following it up with a uh, refinery. So this is different. This is not a two racks build out of Boxer. It won't be uh, that kind of early marine aggression. We'll have to see what he follows this up with. This is actually very reminiscent to me of a game between him and Idra in the very same pool. Where Let Boxer me ask you something same here. Thing. You are the veritable encyclopedia of StarCraft, as I have named you. So I'm just curious. Uh, you seemingly know every single build out of Korea and uh, <laughs> I foreign play. I like to think play. so, anyway. So uh, what do you feel like... Uh, what is this shaping up from from Boxer? Have you seen anything like this uh, out of out of him before? Again, as I said, this is very much reminiscent of his game versus Idra, his first game versus mm -hmm. Idra in this very same pool, where he made this proxy rex, made it look almost like a two rex, uh, then following it up with this refinery. So, if I had to guess, I would not be surprised to see this follow up with a uh, with a factory and some early Hellion play, possibly uh, early commencement as well. Could be this uh, fabled Slayer's build that we're seeing so often at MLG this time around with these early Hellion attacks and the elevator play. We'll have to see, though, not too much uh, here to tell just yet. Well, yeah, if there is one unit that is going to be marked for Anaheim, it's going to be the Hellion. Uh, it's <laughs> yes, really uh, true. The, uh, the Koreans coming over and putting on an exhibition on how to use a clinic, if you will, on how to use Hellions. <laughs> yes, now uh, Boxer, he will lift that barracks up, so obviously nothing uh, more out of that. He is going to set up a bunker, though, and that bunker does finish, so uh, just a little bit of one racks pressure out of him should be able to do a little bit of damage on this hatch before it does get uh, cleaned up by Shep. It's going to be much easier for Shep to deal with this, obviously much less Marines, and Boxer, um, only has one marine in that barracks right now, or rather in that bunker right now, and it looks like he is going to decide to pull back with that second marine. So, interesting choice by him. He does not want to lose that uh, some kind of early attack. No, and he is getting as much information as he can. As I do see a roach horn going down for Chef, which uh, I feel is a good choice. I feel like it'll it'll shut down any hellion play, and yeah, uh, and, and force force Boxer into maybe more uh, more heavy heavy mech. Yeah, absolutely. And look at this boxer. He is dropping that command center wall off, which is further indicative of this Slayer's build I was referring to earlier, as well as getting a couple Hellions out. Now, he did get the scout off on that Roach one, and obviously that is the counter you want to be going for when dealing with this very heavy Hellion play. Now, he will abandon that bunker, looking to salvage that as well. So, not a heavy commitment in the slightest by, uh, by boxer there, so... He's going to give up that position and look to follow this up with Hellions, but again, you, as you said, he did scout off that Roach horn, so we'll have to see how he reacts to that. Absolutely, and Boxer, of course, uh, I have to say it again, uh, some of the best control of any pro in the game, obviously not showing any signs of his age or any signs that his shoulder is bothering him in this particular MLG, just playing so very well. Absolutely, yeah. Now, look at this. Looks like, as you said, he did get the scout off the Archer one, and in response, he'll be getting tanks instead of Hellions, so he knows that he can't commit too heavily to this Hellion play going to be getting some tanks out of that factory, switching it over to that tech lab. So I like this play out of Boxer. Nice reaction out of him. Meta Absolutely. He does want to have a barbecue over at Chess House, though, as we see those Hellions making their way over there to try to get some kills. But uh, I believe that uh, Shath is going to be his defense a bit uh, impregnable here for those Hellions. Will not be able to break in. 
Yeah, the Roaches will force those back. He's going to be uh, forced to just retain map control right now, not going to be able to push in and do any kind of economic damage with those Hellions. Again, good response by Chef, getting that Roach one down as he saw the indicators of this build. But once again, Boxer, he has a contingency plan. I'm going to get these uh, get these tanks out. We'll have to you see know, how this works out for it. I uh, feel Chef. like there's there's such key timings uh, for both Terran and, and Zerg, obviously. And there's some certain game change moments. Of course, when Stim finishes, when a Medivac hits the field, these, these things all are... Uh, crucial timings, and they they really play into the resilience of the marine. Of yeah, course, absolutely. Combat shield, shield as well. But but in these matches, there's been so much aggression and so many so much scouting that we really haven't seen traditional timings out of these guys. Not at all. Things have been kind of skewed off when this early attacks do happen. They slow down timings and they just uh, throw things a bit out of whack. Now, regardless of that, Boxer will be looking to push out here, sending all of his units to the middle of the map. Uh, this will get scouted by a pair of roaches taken out. Those will be taken out by those marines. So. For one thing, Shet does know this coming a little bit late, though, so he's going to have to prepare as a result the Hellions and all the rest of the units moving in now. Yeah, Hellions just posturing and trying to juke and trying to figure out exactly where they can get a shot off. So a scan going down, going to try to take out some uh, creep tumors. And yeah, Boxer slowly, looking to push in here. Yeah, slowly pushing in here, not overcommitting. Very smart control by Boxer. Does not want to move those Hellions in too far to fall to that very heavy roach count out of Shet, so I like that move by him. Now, uh, after a little bit of pokes there, it looks like he'll be deciding to pull back here. And Chef, he is in pursuit, following with all these lings and the roaches as well. But good, such good control right now by Boxer, pulling back the tank now, pulling back the Hellions. Absolutely. Fired, all and the right units. The machine, uh, excuse me, the Marines actually pushing the tank there for a little while. So they're chipping in every way they can, trying to teach that tank to stutter step micro. So look at the marvelous control, though, uh, by Boxer. Able to go ahead and target the units and go ahead and uh, chase off those roaches. And just focus fire is phenomenal out of Boxer. A yeah, very smart play by him. Now, he may get the snipe off these on these overlays, but no, he is going to pull back with all of those units. He has a medevac out now, and as you said, that adds so much resilience to these Marines. We'll be loading up now, possibly to retreat, but it looks like he'll be going for a drop here. I really love this drop play on Shakuris Plateau. If you can set up a tank on the low ground and start shelling the main base, and it looks like that is what Boxer is looking to do here in a little bit. Yeah. Well, uh, the Lings don't want none of that as they come in and get fried. You can see Boxer wants to go ahead and pretty much fortify his natural, make sure that uh, there is not going to be any type of uh, Ling run by or any type of Zerg shenanigans as he wants to posture for, uh, and hold that thought, we do have a siege tank actually uh, shelling away at the main of the Zerg and there is a drop uh, that is going to get cleaned up. Yeah, again, I love this positioning. I love this positioning by Boxer setting up that tank there and beginning to shell on that extractor. It's really smart by him. Uh, also pulling those Marines, and they will get cleaned up by those Lings, so it was a nice little attack, but again, just the big thing here is this uh, this tank shelling away, forcing all the drones to be pulled, and looks like he will also get that extractor. So nice little move there by uh, by Boxer, once again, just trying to get an edge, forcing the mining time off for a little while there. So again, I love that position by Boxer, and he's looking good right now, possibly posturing for another push here pretty soon. Well, you know what? I love the decision out of Chef to go ahead and tech switch uh, and bring the roaches in to go ahead and sort of deny those hellions. However, I don't feel like he's appropriately uh, prepared for uh, the higher mech metagame that he forced uh, Boxer's hand into. And again, I have to mention, I would love to see infestors at this point. You know, fungal growth, so very good. Of course, neural parasite, another great option. Not too many things the infestor does badly or poorly. So I uh, definitely, definitely would love to see him switch into some infestor play. Yeah, we'll be opting for the Muta tech this time around, and that also can be quite effective. You can force your opponent back. I know you love to say this. It's so good for map control, so good for just feeling safe and macroing up, but uh, I know Boxer, he'll be ready for it. He's yeah, the best way to... I don't think this is the good decision. I just don't feel like he can get a Muta cloud uh, yeah. heavy enough fast enough, but we'll have to see, though. It is Shaft, so if anybody can do it, it's him. Absolutely, yeah. I just love this timing out of Boxer deciding to push out now. Uh, what it's going to do is force the meters to deal with this, and that's such the good timing when he's lo so low on the meters. Uh, you don't have that much of a ground army right now. Banely Nest not even complete yet, and you really need that to deal with this very scary push coming out of Boxer here. Absolutely, and Boxer trying to posture to go ahead and lay siege to this natural. As you can see, Ling's coming down now from the Zerg to go ahead and deal with this. They're going to try to get a, a full surround on the tanks and Marines. Mute is coming back now. Actually, this attack from Boxer forcing the Mutas back to have to deal with this, which uh, ideally Chef wants to keep them in the main of Boxer, uh, in effect keeping Boxer at home and out of his face so he's free to expand. 